अज्ञानतिरांधा ज्ञानंजन श्लाक चक्षुर्न मिलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम वाकुभ कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो महाबदन्नाय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नमने गौरक्षिषे गुरव गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय तदाल कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तद भक्ताय In our scriptures, I think that someone should come here in front of us. Otherwise, to whom I will speak? If you want to hear, you should come in front of me. <coughs> yes, sir. that in this world all kinds of living beings who have sense intelligence they want happiness peace and calm of mind tarne par pant sapar sapani saros always they want to be happy this is the nature matter life those who have senses those who have some kinds of wish they feel happiness and sufferings they are chetan jeev they are conscious conscious living entities conscious living entities living entities and where there is no wish no feelings they are called on conscious matters like what is this jo that only on conscious matter it has no life but we human beings animals birds creatures trees grasses <coughs> all have life they have sense they can feel sorrow suffering melody or anything good so where there is life where it in some feelings where there is some wish these are called souls or conscious living being the trees the creepers the fishes the animals and human being and and gods goddesses <coughs> demi gods all has within their body soul same type of soul you know but their past activities <coughs> their senses are of some different or is degrees different degrees 
fishes are also sold we are also sold trees have also sold hmm? everywhere where i will see wishes hmm? and feelings they are also but there is some difference in their intelligence and feelings we think that only you human be- beings are only soul we think that all have been made only to eat and to taste that is why we don't treat them like our human so our object in this world to be happy and to make also happy to others we think that by collecting wealth by improving our medical science economical science and other science transportations communications. communications and now it is what computer, computer. computer. by developing all this we can be happy we want a very strong healthy body always in young age in the youth we don't want to be old we don't want to die we don't want any problem suffering and sorrows but it is true that whether we want or not problems old age death are bound to come and will they will keep their feet on our heads whether we want to suffer or not we want old age or not we want to die or not they will come and one day we will die taking not anything from this world not a farthing not not our even a hair we will give up this body also here which we think that i'm this body even we will have to give up so if a man has a very strong body so beautiful face and all body having worldly all kinds of qualities young is very intelligent very expert in making money then we think that oh by this we can be very happy but really we cannot be happy happy by these things we cannot have if you are so much wealthy then some miseries some problems are bound to come and to forget all these sufferings we can take so heavy wine and other things tobacco smoking why to forget our sufferings so that we can sleep in night sometimes problems are so dangerous we cannot solve so we cannot sleep well so you will have to take some pills for that and if the pills are in big quantity in quantity heavy quantity we can die also we want to forget our senses so that we can forget all miseries that is why we take and then we think that oh you are very happy 
by taking drugs, hmm? but sense goes away and we think that, oh, we are monarch of all, we are happy, but really not. So, we want to tell a pastam Nishingadev and Prahlad Maharaj. And there was a king, <clears throat> very strong, very intelligent. And he used to know very first class of duplicacy, duplicity and politics. And he has a very good, very strong army. His commanders were like so strong. He was so wealthy. He has a bone that will not die by anyone. Anyone cannot kill him. Anyone, any man, human, in human shape or demigods, any snake, any fish, any life in this creation can, should not kill me. I should not die in day, in night, in any month. He has that type of a boon that anyone cannot in this world, cannot kill him. <coughs> but what became? What became? What was the result? He was not happy. In a moment he was killed. And how? We are going to narrate this thing. Hmm? Oh, you can <coughs> speak something about Prahlad Maharaj and this thing. Very clearly. Happy very You can give. No, no. Oh, yeah, let me run on this. I had. So, Maharaj was just <coughs> mentioning that many, many um, millenniums ago, many years ago, there existed a personality called Hiranyakashipu. So, Hiranyakashipu. He was what we call a demon. Means that his mentality in life was to eat, drink, be merry, and to dominate in every possible way. So to achieve this, um, Hirani Kashipu, he performed great austerities. He went to a place called Mandara Hill. And he performed austerities, namely, he stood on his toes with his arms outstretched like this for a very, very long time. It's explained that he did so for a period of 60,000 years. Because during that time, um, people, they had lifespans that um, went up to 100,000 years. So he performed this great austerity, so much so that an anthill had covered his body and his body was um, completely eaten up by ants. There was no body, no flesh. And all that was left was just bones. And his life here was sustained within the bones. So performing this austerity, he was performing um, for whom? He was trying to appease the secondary creator of this material world, his name, Lord Brahma. In the Vedic scriptures, it stated that Krishna or Vishnu, that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he is the original creator. But to manifest the different forms, as Maharaj was explaining, you have inert, inert matter and you also have the living entities who have different species of life. There are 8,400,000 species of life. You have the aquatics, the um, trees, the animals, the human species, and even on higher planet, planetary systems, you have the devas, the demigods. So the topmost demigod, his name is Lord Brahma. 
And he's known as the secondary creator of this material cosmic manifestation. And he creates the different forms that make up the different species of life. So Lord Brahma um, was approached by this Hirani Kashyapu who was performing his austerities to try and please Lord Brahma. Because he thought that because Lord Brahma is creating all the variegatedness within this material world, that he can give me my boon. And what was his boon? He wanted immortality. So he performed this austerity, as I mentioned, for 60,000 years. And finally, Lord Brahma, seeing the situation, how he was um, <coughs> actually creating such a disturbance and ruining his body, then finally he came and he asked him, what boon would you like? What do you want? And he said, I would like a boon from you. And Lord Brahma, he replied, well, what boon do you want? And he said that he wanted to be immortal. And Lord Brahma explained to him that I myself, I'm created by the Supreme Lord. Though I am um, apparently the creator of this material world, but actually I just take those elements which already exist and I'm able to manipulate them in a particular way because I'm empowered by, in this way by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But even though I have such a long lifespan, even I have to die. So how can I give you something that I myself don't have? I cannot give you mortality. But Hirani Kashipu, he was very um, devious in his mentality. Because one who wants to enjoy matter, it's not that um, one is necessarily intelligent, but one is devious in how, or very crafty, in how one will try and get that sense enjoyment by whatever means possible. So he said, okay, if you can't give me mortality, so give me the boon that um, I will not be able to be killed by any um, human being or any animal. Then Lord Brahma, he said, granted, give me the boon that I cannot be killed in the day or in the night. Lord Brahma, he said, granted, give me the boon that I will not be killed on the land or the sea or the sky. He said, granted, and in this way he asked for so many different boons, thinking that he would be able to be immortal. So, after getting these boons, then thinking that he had gained immortality, then he left the Mandara Hill. Actually, I did not explain also that when Lord Brahma he came to him, then he took some um, water from his pot and he sprinkled it on the head of Hirani Kashipu, who at this time was only subsisting on, he, he was just bones, and he rejuvenated his body. So, going back home, um, then he went, and during the time that he was performing the austerities, his wife um, had fled home. His wife was pregnant, and she had within her womb a son whose name was Prahlad. So, the, demigod, the demigods had been so much disturbed by Hirani Kashipu, this demon, that when Hirani Kashipu had gone to perform his austerities, then they went to kill the baby that was within the womb of his wife, thinking that, oh, because the father is a demon, so the son also, he'll have the same qualities of the father. So the wife had gone to the hermitage of a sage called Narada Muni. And when the... Demigods so, took Kayadu and they wanted to kill the boy, but he was in home. Mm. So they took it to heaven that their fancy will keep the boy, but when he will kill. So they were taking it had to... So they were going to take her to the heavenly planets. Uh, but in the midway, Nar Narada Muni. Uh. Oh, so then Narada Muni, he came and he told the demigods that actually the baby that's within the womb of this lady Kayadu is actually a very, um, he's a great saintly personality, that he's not a demon. So you should not, um, obviously you should not um, try to harm this and baby you, in any way. You cannot kill. And by your best efforts, because this baby is protected by the Lord, you will not be able to kill the baby anyway. So, the demigods, they 
um, left the wife of Hirani Kashipu, and at that time, Kayadu, she went and she took shelter of Narada Muni. She went and she stayed at the hermitage of Narada Muni. And she was so frightful that still the demigods might create some problem that she um, stayed at his hermitage for the time that her husband was performing these austerities, which was a time of 60,000 years. So during this period, Narada Muni was giving so much instructions from the sp spiritual sp um, scriptures, called the Vedic scriptures, um, to Kayadu. And Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad, who was within the womb, he was hearing all these instructions and um, getting so much knowledge and realization. So finally, when he ran Kashipu, he came home, and his, in due course, his son was born, and as he grew up, then he was put into school. But he was put into a school, just as we see in um, modern civilization, there's millions and billions of dollars which are being spent for education. But what is the education? The education is based on how one can prosper materially, how one can become very adept at different materialistic sciences, how one can become very adept in manipulating the material energy, and ultimately how one can enjoy the body and extensions of the body, meaning with the family, society, um, and perpetuate the bodily conception of life. But if we analyze the situation and see how much money is being spent on material education and see how much money is being spent by these institutions on educating the children that you're not this body, that you're a spiritual living entity, and that ultimately your happiness comes from self-realization, we see that it's practically next to nothing. So Hirani Kashipu, he was of this mentality. This type of mentality is, it, even though it may be on the surface, it may, be, it may appear um, very nice, but actually it's not different from the mentality of this Hirani Kashipu, who was demoniac. So, Hirani Kashipu sent him to school, and he had his teachers who were called Sanda and Amaka. So after studying for some time, um, Hirani Kashipu, he called his son. He wanted his boy to come. And then the mother of Hirani Kashipu dressed him up very nicely, and then she took Prahlad to the father, and Hirani Kashipu had Prahlad sit on his lap, and he was stroking his hair very lovingly, and then he asked him, Oh son, what, is, what have you learnt from um, your teachers? And then Prahlad Maharaj, he said, um, Oh best of the demons. He addressed his father um, as, Oh best of the demons, in a very respectful way. He ran to Kashipu, he was happy to be called a demon, because that was his position, to, um, to defy Vishnu. So he said, O oh king, O oh best of the demons, the best thing that I've learned today, uh, up to now, is that one who is trying to prosper in material life and be happy in a material, materialistic conception of life can never be happy. But rather, one should um, give up such conception and take to spiritual life. Upon hearing this, Hirani Kashipu, he became very angry. Uh, and he said, what is this that my son is learning? And he took him off his lap, and then he went, he went to the teachers, Sanda Maka, and he said, what is this that this boy is learning? And Sanda Maka, they said, well, he did not learn this from us. So he said, okay, you take him and you teach him properly. So then, Pallad was there, he was learning <laughs> some more, and after some time, he ran to Kashipu, he called for his son again. And then the mother dressed him up very nicely and brought Prahlad to the father. And the father now, he sat him on the lap again. And he said, now Prahlad, now what, what have you learned from your teachers now? Have you learned properly? And then Prahlad, he said, what I've learned is Shravnam, Kirtnam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevnam, Arjanam, Vandanam, Dasya, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam. Iti pumsa pita vishnu bhakti chen navalakshana kriyata bhavatada tanmanye ditu uti. That, O oh Father, I have learned that one who is engaged in shravanam, in hearing about the pastimes of the Lord, hearing spiritual topics, 
And after hearing such topics from qualified devotees, from qualified spiritualists, who have realized the absolute truth, then one can discuss such activities amongst my friends. I realize that this is very nice. Not just learning the materialistic things which my teachers, Sandan Amaka, are teaching me. Because what, what was Sandan Amaka teaching? They were teaching him economics. They were teaching him diplomacy. Because his father was a king. Hirani Kashipu was a great king. So they were teaching him how to follow in the footsteps of his father and be so diplomatic, so political from a very um, young age. Just as we see in society today, we see the leaders of society and everybody's saying that they're doing things not just for the best of their country or people, but for the best of um, humanity, for the best of the world. But actually, it's all the, um, politics and diplomacy. Everybody's looking after their best interests, but they're very expert at presenting it in such a way that um, you know, the general public, they feel that they're getting the best deal. And they try to, their whole system is to control the general public. And if you cannot control them with sweet words, then after, you give them a nice big position in society. We see this happens with so many people who have um, revolutionary ideas towards a particular government. Then the government, they first try to control them in a particular way, with sweet words, then after they try to buy them into the government system, and they give them a big position. And then if they can't do that, then they just spoil the name or they kill them. They get rid of them. So, Prahlad Maharaj was being taught this in school, from a very early age. Practically speaking, he was only about five years old. But he said, this is not what I've learned. What I really have learned is to hear the glories of the Lord. That these pastimes, they take away all, inauspicious, all inauspiciousness from the heart. They remove duplicity. They remove diplomacy. And rather, they imbue one with a feeling of love for the Supreme and love for all parts and parcels of the Supreme. Because if one has love for God, then automatically one will have love for all parts and parcels. And I've learned to chant these glories. By chanting these glories, then I'll get deeper um, realization and I'll be able to remember them. Shravnam, Kirtnam, Vishnu, Smarnam, Padasavnam. And that rather than serving um, my family, my society, um, I've learned that the best thing is to serve the lotus feet of the Lord. To engage my time in worshiping the Lord, dressing the Lord, uh, and doing, performing different activities for the Lord. Archanam, Vandanam, offering prayers to the Lord. Dasyam, Surrendering myself as a servant, Sakyam, understanding that actually the Lord, He is my real friend. There's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita, one of our Vedic scriptures. It states, Bhaktaram Yagata Pasham, Sava Loka Maheshwaram, Suridam Sava Bhutanam, Gyapa Mam Shantam Richatin. That one who understands that the Lord, He is ultimately the enjoyer, Bhaktaram Yagata, the enjoyer of all sacrifices, but the best friend of all living entities that such a person can have peace. So I said, I've learned that actually, the Lord, He's my friend. And that by having a friendship with Him, I will never be cheated. In our relationships in this material world, it's all based on give and take. And there's always that element of cheating to some degree. But when one has a relationship with the Lord, or those who are um, very close to the Lord, who are self-realized, free from envy, malice, then only with such relationships, one will not be cheated. And ultimately, I've learned Atmani Vedana, to surrender everything to the Lord. Because ultimately, nothing belongs to me. We come with nothing, and we go with nothing. And all this body is made up of material elements, which is the energy of the Lord, and the soul also is meant to be united with love in love and devotion. So when he said this, then his father became completely irate. He became so angry that he threw the boy off his lap, and immediately he went to the teachers, to cut off their throats. He said, what is this that you're teaching this boy? How can you teach him all, all this? And they said, no, this is not coming from us. They said, how could he not, he's only five years old. Where could he learn all of this? It must be coming from you. They said, no, believe us, it's not coming from us. And furthermore, we have the priestly caste. So it behooves you to speak to us like this. You should know how you deal with us. Otherwise, you're making an offense. So. So then Hirani Kashipul, he let that go, and then he sent Palat back to the school, and then the teachers, 
they called Palan. And they asked him, they said, Oh Palan, where are you learning all of this from? And Palan, he explained to them that actually all of this is coming just from the heart spontaneously. I do not know where it comes, but just spontaneously it just flows from the heart and it's coming out. And then the teachers, they, um, they did not really believe, but Palad, he was concealing the fact that previously, while he was in the womb of his mother, that he had heard the spiritual instruction from a great sage, Narada Muni. I've explained this before. So, because he had such a high-class spiritual master, a spiritual preceptor, then, even though he was only five years old, he was already a self-realized soul. And no matter what situation he was put in, he was undeterred. He had very strong faith in, in the goal of life, which was to achieve love of God. So then, the teachers, they took him back into school, and they started to teach. Prahlad was with other schoolmates, and he, he seemed to be learning his work and doing quite well. So then his teachers sent in a marker, they had to go somewhere for some errand. And they thought, well, Prahlad seems to be doing quite well. You should sit. Can you tell? When Srinakaspu asked Prahlad Maharaj, if your teachers are not giving education like this, from where you received all the teaching? Hmm? Then what he told? Naishan? Remember the slopes? Huh, you should go. And you should try to. So, Shri Gurudev has wanted me to speak of this conversation uh, between Hirani Kashipu and Prahlad Maharaj. Hirani Kashipu, who is very eager to know... When he heard from the teachers that he has, they have not uh, taught him all these things, then he was so angry mm -hmm. and he told to Prahlad, where you have learned, learned all these things, Prahlad's nonsense and all these things. Mm -hmm. hmm? Then Prahlad Maharaj, he replied to his father, Matena Krishna Parato Satoba Mito Bipade Tabihabatana Adan Tagobi Vishatam Tamisham Puna Puna Chavita Chavana. He said, Oh, actually, those materialistic persons their inclination towards the service of Krishna can never be aroused by their own efforts, by the efforts of others, or by a combination of the both. <coughs> they have the griha bratanam. They have a vow to be in the bodily concept of life. I am this body, this is me, my family, my house, and all of these things. And they are making progress very rapidly by all of their material activities where they're going very quickly in the direction of hell, the darkest region of all existence. How, and what are they doing along the way? Puna, Puna, Chavana, oh, Chavana. Don't sleep. They are straight. Very straight. Don't take the help of wall. You should come. At least like this from wall. Don't take help. They're going in the direction of the darkest. You are not old. You should come. No, don't take help. If I'm old and I'm not taking help, you see. They don't going, sleep. They're going in the direction of the darkest region of existence by chewing that which is already being chewed. Uh, in other words, in many, many lifetimes, uh, all living entities, they have tried to take some pleasure out of the activities of eating, sleeping, sex, and fighting with one another. But they were never satisfied by these things. Yet again and again, birth after birth, they try to chew that which has already been chewed. Mm? Just like if you take sugar cane and you chew it, mm? then 
you throw it down. If someone comes and picks up that sugar cane and chews it, no juice will come out. So this is, you can chew and chew and chew, but there's no taste. So this is the nature of the material world. Chewing and chewing and chewing. Trying to enjoy again and again. But no taste, no satisfaction for the soul anywhere. So he said they are madly engaged in chewing something which has already been chewed. There's no satisfaction for these people. And their inclination towards Krishna, it is never aroused. It cannot be. They may try to arouse it. Others may try to help them. And a combination of both. But the inclination will never be aroused. Then he said, Nate vidu swatagatim hi vishnum turashayaye bahir atamanina yandaya tanda upaniya manas te pisha tantram uruptam nibadha. He said, Nate vidu swatagatim hi vishnum. They don't know their own self interest. They think this thing is, will be good for me and this thing will be good for me. But what is the real self-interest of the individual? The real self-interest is the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Na te vidhu, they don't know. So gatim hi vishnam. Their own self-interest and the goal of their life is the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. Durasha ye bani artamani na. They have so many material desires. And they think that all these external things of this world, that there's some value in them. And therefore what happens? They choose any person who is very expert in manipulating this material world and accept him as, the, as their guru. And accepting initiation from him, they follow him. But that person they're following is blind. They are blind and they're following another blind person. So what is the result when a blind first person follows the words and instructions of another blind person? Mm? Then all of them together they fall in a ditch. Mm? So in the same way, in the world today, there are so many people giving different types of education and advice. But they don't know who they are. They don't know who is God. They don't know what is the goal of life. Mm? They are completely blind. And the common man are following... The common man is so blind and he's following the educated... Uh, uh, intellectuals, the intelligentsia of society, who are equally blind. And together, they're all going to, very quickly, to destruction. Mm -hmm. Why? Because all of their activities just bind them more and more. All of their ac activities in this world, they cause karmic reactions, which cause them to be bound and stay in the cycle of birth and death again and again. Many problems come to them and they invent some technique to become free from the problem. But their remedy for the problem is more dangerous than the problem itself. And in this way they become more and more entangled in material existence and go down. Right? So then, how is it possible that such persons can ever be changed? How will their inclination towards Krishna be aroused? So then Pulag Maharaj, he answered that question. Sprishatana ta pagamaya ta ta Mahiya shams pad rajo bishaykam Niskin chananam nabinita javat Naishamna istavad urukraman grim That the jivas, they have so many anarts, with, that means unwanted qualities within their heart. How will they ever be changed? Their chitta vritti. The function, the tendency of their consciousness is always flowing in the direction of the material energy. <coughs> but, sprishyatana anatapagamayadata, all their anarts will, be dis will disappear. And their tendency towards, they will be turned round and their consciousness will flow in the direction of the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. How? Just by mahiyashant para jogi sheikan, niskinchananam navanita yavat. If they can, smear their entire bodies with the dust of the lotus feet of a Niskinchen Vaishnav. That means a pure devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead who has no possession. He never thinks, this is mine. He never even thinks, I am mine. But he thinks everything belongs to the Supreme Lord. I belong to the Supreme Lord. Mm -hmm. He has no uh, possessions. And he's fully in love with the Lord. By smearing one's entire body with the dust of the lotus feet of such a Vaishnav, then the tendency of any conditioned soul is completely turned around. 
Mm? Otherwise, it is quite impossible. Mm? So what does it mean to smear the entire body with the dust of the feet of a Vaishnav? The dust of the feet of the pure devotee means his mood. Mm? To become thoroughly immersed in the mood of the pure devotee. And then, one's life can be successful. <coughs> Very good. Bhairnath Prabhu will come and he will tell <coughs> Hearing this, <coughs> Hirnakaswa become furious. And what he did? You should tell in a very strong way. <laughs> Not in sleeping. <laughs> Sweet or anything? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't <laughs> <laughs> you So after this, Hiranyakasipu, he became more furious. Mm. Yeah. He became so furious that he wanted to kill his own son. Yeah. This is the nature of a person who is influenced by the tendency to enjoy this world. Uh, anyone who thinks, I am Lord and Master of all I survey, I am the enjoyer, I am the possessor, he thinks he can kill and murder and do anything for his own sense gratification. <coughs> Although he ran a he had so many blessings that no one could kill him. Nowhere, even in any month or any day, any year, in the night, the day, inside the house, outside the house could he be killed. But what was his problem? Pralat Maras very clearly pointed that out. His problem was that, my dear father, although you have so many qualifications, you cannot control your mind, your senses. Yeah, you are master of this world, but you cannot control your own mind. And this is the big problem with anyone who thinks that he can be happy in this world without God consciousness. He thinks that <coughs> I will enjoy this world without thinking that I have any relationship with God. He will be the slave of his own mind, his own senses. And this was the position of Hiranya Kasipu. Although he was the <coughs> biggest and most successful controller of this world, he was not able to recognize his own relationship <coughs> with God. So what happened? He told his guards, Come on! And they were coming very quickly because they were so much fearing the orders of their master. And he said, take this boy and kill him at once! <laughs> so, he said, throw him off the cliff in the ocean! And he was... Thrown, but he was thrown can... off the cliff in the ocean, and what happened? Krishna picked him up. Yeah. Nothing happened with Pralat Maharaj. Again, he came, and Hirani <coughs> Kasipu, he couldn't believe what happened. He became more furious, and he said, throw him in that boiling oil there. Uh -huh. There was a big pot with boiling oil, and he threw him inside that bo boiling oil. Nothing happened. Yeah. They all became ice. Ice. like ice, yeah. very cool. So nice. so so Who nice. did it? <laughs> Holy Master, Lord did it. Then, then he was given very, very powerful poison. Poison. Mm. Yeah. So he was forced to drink poison from Maras. What happened? Poison turned into. Amrit, nectar. nectar, nothing happened. His Lord always protected any atrocious activity which his father tried <coughs> to kill his own little son. Lord always saved him. So this Elephants is... were sent 
to smash but elephants elephants that sent yeah big big elephants were sent but when they touched oh they have a very electrical shock and they began to <laughs> run away <laughs> his one sister was holika holika how qualified go on holika you don't know i vaguely remember holika ah so you should <laughs> yeah, thank you <laughs> was the game of holika so hiranyakashipu try at his level best to kill him sing him sorry his dear sister came and asked oh my dear brother why are you sorry i can kill him in a moment you forget that i benedicted by lord brahma that if i sit or if i enter in burning fire fire could not touch me so i shall take my nephew in my lap and i said enter in burning in fire that's big flame and you will turn to ashes and i will come back again what the your child will and your child will be burn into ashes he was how you became so happy oh i forget as before yes sister i shall give you a very good you a good presentation then hiranaka sub arrange he order his servants to arrange big fire big flame suppose is going to touch to sky holika came and called his nephew oh my dear nephew please come i shall play with here with you here taking him she entered into fire after a couple of minutes she turned into ashes and prahlad maharaj came out from the fire smiling face Who protect him? Because God is every higher. He is protecting Parlad every higher. Who has taken shelter? Who has taken shelter in the Lord's feet, or who has surrendered unconditionally in the Lord's feet of Lord? Oh, he is bound to save. So Lord is always saving. Saving him. So the Himna ka sibut order his servant. Throw him from the mountain. Then in the down there is so many rocks. He will be smashed completely. They did so, but nothing happened. Every higher Krishna is protecting him because he is completely surrendered himself in the lotus feet of God. Then he is thinking, what to do? Then is the preceptor of Prahlad Maharaj, Sundar Nawal, for the told, don't worry, we shall teach him. then he will be very good boy my father is not here my father is not here when my father will come he will teach him as a manner the boy will be very obedient to you don't worry <coughs> then sandavan would go to prallad taking prallad went to their hermitage once they went for some household work they, they began to teach but one day they were they Ben. Teaching Pallad, Sam Dam Dandu. Sam Dam Dandu. Hey, that means diplomacy, duplicity, hypocrisy, all these things. Like a king, how to behave other kings and other country. They are thinking. Our Pallad Maharaj became silent, not reply anything. They are thinking that Pallad became so learned, learned person about this all, all these things. So one day, they went for household work. They appointed Pallad Maharaj as a monitor. Oh Pallad, please take care of your friends. They will not make any disturbance. They will not make any noise. I am coming. I am coming soon. very soon. So they went away. Then all boys became so happy. Oh Pallad, today our teacher is not here. We can play. Pallad Maharaj replied, Don't worry. Please listen me. We will play after bird. We can we can play after what? Please listen me at first. What? 
Then Pallad Maharaj give him some instruction. Please follow me. Then you will be happy for your whole life, forever. The boy is replying, Aj karo sa kal karo, kal karo sa parso, Kyo khat khat me pade huye, O samay pada hai barso. What you want to do bhajan, you can do tomorrow. If you want to do tomorrow, you can do day after tomorrow. Because we shall lie for a long time. For long I told, don't think so. Who will die when none can say? Any, at any moment, at any time, anybody can give his body. So don't worry, please listen to me. So please start bhajan from beginning, from boyhood, from childhood. Prolongma is teaching them. Komaret acharet prago dharman bhagavataniha durlabhang manusam janmatada padruva marthadam. Please start from childhood. Otherwise, you will never be ex an expert. I told that Krishna is supreme personality of Godhead. We are part and parcel. If we want to be happy, we should chant, remember, and glorify that Lord from very boyhood. Then the children told him, the boys told, that now you are so much baby and we will play, we will study and gradually we will be expert anything and when we will be old then we we shall be uh, well, like this. So the boys, the boys replied, when we will be grow up and we will be expert and old, then we shall do bhajan. Paramahai told, no my dear friend, it is not possible. When you will be when old, you will be old, then you cannot see you cannot see it straight. straight. Your backbone will not be straight. Mm -hmm. So how you can meditate bhakti yoga? It is not possible. Then Prabhupada Maharaj give one Prabhupada has given one chart of that lifetime. No, no, he told also. Mm -hmm. It is not so that you will be old. Mm -hmm. You can die in before old. In young age. In young age, not where, where it, in childhood you can, you can die in young age also. So no certainty that all will be young. So if you are dead in boyhood, then how you will be? How you will concentrate and chant and remember Lord? So very vaguely you should do. Then Prahlad Maharaj told, what? Na chemam mukundu charanam bujam. Na tat prayasu karta. Tat prayasu na karta bhajata yu bhaya param. Na chemam, na tat prayasu karta bhajam. Jata ayu bhaya param. Na tatha binda te chemam mukundu charanam bujam hare. Tat prayasu na karta bha. Don't do some efforts by which your lifetime will be spoiled. No, no. You should not be worried for your maintenance. It may be that you are not endeavoring to maintain your life, making money, you are not making money, you are not doing anything, but it's so everything is coming automatically by your past activities. Like a man can take birth in the house of Prime Minister. He is wealthy itself, he himself, because he has come in the family of a very big, rich person. Automatically, everything, life, maintaining is going on. And if a man has come in a very poor family, why he came? By his old activities. Hmm? So up to death, we are bind, bound to test all the activities which we have done. Their impressions will come. And automatically our maintenance of life will be continued. Continue. 
So don't worry for this. You know that elephants are so much weak. Stomach. 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 Eh? They don't serve anyone, but they automatically eat it. And python, they also never do any job. And birds, they have no business. And any person doing so much after um, activities eh? all day long, but he cannot maintain his own stomach. A man who becomes like mad, leprosy, so many diseases that he cannot walk. He wants to do, but he cannot do. Why? So don't be worry for your maintenance, or it will automatically become. You should try to realize who are you, from where you have come, who is maintain. Maintaining you, who is looking after you, who is controlling whole world, you should try to know from beginning. And then he gave a chart for the whole life. If we have a age of hundred years, what life? So you you have we have a lifetime of hundred years. So among these hundred years, we work in daytime and sleep at night. So. Among the hundred years, so we spend our half lifetime, that means fifty years, by sleeping only. After that, when you will be from eighty to hundred, if if you, you have not controlled your senses, when taking wine so much and bad activities, more time you will lose. Not only half, more than half it will be gone. Yeah. You have drank so much, and for hours and hours, you are sleeping in drains, and dogs are washing your mouth. <laughs> It may be. So, so, those who have not controlled their senses, so time will go pass uselessly. But if half. Waking and half sleeping, then fifty years will pass uselessly, and then when you become too old, between eighty to hundred, and from first beginning, first beginning, twenty years, years to be an expert to read and write and expert. If you want to be an expert in this world, at least twenty years is needed. So fifty plus twenty, and then. 70 and 30 years left there. So among the 30, last 80 to 100, you could not walk, you could not meditate, you could not digest. So if you think some something, next moment you forget. So how you can do bhajan? So it is not possible. Only remaining. Only even in ten years. In ten years. In ten years, there are so many desire, uncountable desire. We I want said, car. This. We want airplane. I want, want this. I want to be very. And also to marriage, yes. to maintain and family. Maintain family and nourish our children. So many desires. So, so time is like zero. So nothing is left there. So we are told that if you take too much alcohol, then. Dog will come and wash your face. <laughs> in Kolkata community park, in Kolkata community park, people are coming with so many one, two, three dogs. Again. <laughs> so you should try to begin your sadhan bhajan, remember and chanting from very beginning. Beginning. Then the boys asked, "From where you have learned all this thing? Hmm. Who told you? Who told you?" Then Prahlad Maharaj replied, "When I was in my mother room, my spiritual master Narodisi taught me everything. He told to my mother, but my but mother, mother forgot. But my mother everything. But I remember all these things by his causeless mercy. So, so how far. to do bhajan? How to meditate? How to do bhakti yoga?" Prahlad Maharaj replied, 
हरे Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hearing this chanting, Sanda Marta came and they think what to do. Now there is a dilemma. As before only Pralada was there, now all boys are chanting and remembering Bhagavan, God. What to do? Then they inform to Hiranyakasipu. That your boy polluted all boys. Hirnaka Sivu told, Ask Pallad, O oh Pallad, You are always chanting and remembering, meditating for God's name. Where is your God? He told, God is everywhere. Is your God in this pillar? Well, yes. What to say about pillar? Is inside yourself, inside myself, inside everywhere, inside everybody, even inside in your soul and this pillar. Then here does he become so furious. He thought I shall mash this pillar and I shall kill God. Then he fist that pillar and one tremendous sound came and like a roaring. Like a lion is roaring, then he saw that one, not any animal, not human being, heart is up, up, uh, down west like human beings and up west like lion. He thought, I never seen in my whole life this kind of creation. <coughs> Who is this? And he began to fight with him. And he was missing all day. Nishana Dev want to play with him something, he caught him, again he let him free. Then all the members become worried, oh, now Hiranyakasipu may dress the whole world. They are praying God, oh God, please kill him. Quickly, don't delay. Then Nishana Dev took him on his lap and told, this is not day and night, this is twilight. So light, half half. That Twilight. means Twilight. dusk. Twilight. 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 Not day, not night. So Hiranyakasipu was benefited by Lord Brahma. So <laughs> Bhagavan is fulfilling the all benediction and told no weapons, not suited by arrow or any gun, by only nail. No month, no year. That means leap year. No squad. Not sky, not on earth, on his lap. So fulfilling all benediction, not, house, not, not house, inside, not outside, on door. So fulfilling the all benediction, he killed Hiranyakasipu. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. all the members became fearful. Nishimadi was so angry. Just like now, destruction is coming. Lakshmi Devi, his potency, seeing his mood, she went away. All Devi goddess, seeing they went away. Then Brahma told Pralla, Your master came only for you. Where is they went away? They went far away from Nishina Dev. Why? They are thinking that if he is so angry, First, Brahma told them to go and please your master. Then, oh, we cannot go. In this way, you should try. Brahma told the demigodess, please go and please your master. They became fearful. Oh, we could not go in this stage. 
His mood is not good. At last, Brahma ordered Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad, go and please your master. And specify your master. Prahlad Maharaj came and jumped over his lap. Just like one lion came to kill one elephant. And his whole body full of blood. It looked like very ferocious. But when he came in his cave, a little baby lion jumped over his neck and played with him. And that lion caressed him. Similarly, Prahlad Maharaj jumped over his lap. Nishinga Devi is telling, Oh Prahlad, please excuse me. I became so late. So, please ask any benediction. Prahlad Maharaj replied, Oh my dear master, I am not a, not a businessman that I shall take something in exchange. If you go any supermarket, if you pay, then you, they give you some ingredients. If you not pay, they will not allow to take anything. So Prahlad Maharaj is telling, I am not a businessman that I shall take something from you. I serve you, so I shall take something in exchange. I don't want. Nishinga Dev told, Yet, you have to ask something. Then Prahlad Maharaj replied, Please excuse my father. He gave you so much trouble. <coughs> then Nishinga Dev replied, Your father already liberated. Who will do bhajan in this world if he is Konishtha Vaishnav, that means in beginner stage, then his seventh generation will be free from all these material sufferings and sorrows, they will get liberation. If any middle class of Vaishnav, then his fourteen generation will be free from all sufferings and sorrows. If high class of practitioner, then his twenty one generation will get liberation from this world. So your father already free from all this suffering and sorrows. Then Prahlad, Mishra told, you have to ask again any benediction. Prahlad Mahai told, if you want to give me any benediction, please benedict me, that I shall suffer for this whole world, and the whole world get liberation, they will go to your planet, and they will serve you, and they will be happy for eternally. Nishinga Dev told, O oh, Prahlad, you win the race, I defeated by you. But it will not be possible. But if anyone here dialogue between yourself and myself, they will be liberated from this world, suffering and sorrows, and they will attain heavenly planet Vaikuntha Dham, and they will serve Bhagavan eternally. So, giving this benediction, Prahlad Maharaj becomes happy. So, in this world, who want to be happy eternally or don't want to suffer? So if they chant Bhagavan's name, chant God's name, meditate God, then they will be free from all suffering and calamities of this world and they will be happy eternally. Hare Krishna. Right. Today is Christmas Day. No? In whole world, all are celebrating this this festival. The appearance of, appearance day of Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ. He's like a messenger or son of God. Huh? We also trust like this. Certainly the God he is the generator of this world. So he is G, D, destructor, and O, operator. So, uh, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, he may be shun, or he may be messenger of God, no doubt, because he was so high class of devotee. He trusted in God. And he instructed all persons to have trust in God. Those who have trust in God, they will be happy. And those who have not trust in God, they are demons. And they always be in suffer. 
also he instructed so many things and all are extant true he has told in, he told that in bible the sacred book god has created men after his own image so god has a very beautiful say and he is full of so transcendental qualities if he has no shape he can't be merciful so god has some shape and that is why according to his shape he has created men men or humans are beautiful in the whole creation more than animals god created horses or he bird don't say cow donkey so many things monkey he was not satisfied but according to his appearance and what he when he created men he became so happy so god has said he is so merciful he is so powerful he can create in a moment whole world he can destruct a whole world in a second minute he is so powerful but other hand he is so merciful so if we pray anything he will fulfill <clears throat> like father give me bread and butter oh very easily he can do his manifestation can give his powers like achar can give all these things personally he will have not to give all these things oh by his mercy his manifestation can give very easily all these things and if we are only jesus christ has not told that only we should pray him for bread and butter bread and butter butter cannot satisfy yours it cannot give pleasure happiness in life all take bread and butter they not only this he has not told that you should take meat he has told a uh, bread butter from so many fruits so many things if you will take meat meat means n e m e a t then to whom you lead it will be to you so don't take flesh flesh mm, fish meat and eggs and all this they are also souls so never it has been told in bible that we should only demons can take it. be merciful to all has it told yes. be merciful to all oh to child to children be merciful to dis- to uh, a person who has some diseases no? you should help we know florence in ten uh, night angle yes. eh? how she used to serve all oh his words were so sweet falling uh, christ and his teachings serving all so we should try to do all but it is not sufficient it is not the Uh, whole teachings of bible or isa christ jesus christ what internally we should try to serve him if they are only wanting him a bliss of life peace of mind and uh, happiness then what you are how you are serving god just try to serve god how you can serve how you can you can serve a uh, diseased person sick person eh? sick person. person or if in war he has been he has injured injured, injured. injured so much hands are gone fight that him you can serve him but can you serve internally can you change the mood of that person if he is offensive can merit night angle change is our sister's never you can 
Take your sweet behavior to Supreme Personality of God. You can change anyone. So we should try to change inner heart. And it can be only if we can engage anyone in the service of Supreme Personality of God with love and affection. This is the pure instructions of Jesus Christ. We are pure Christian. We want to serve all beings. If the followers of Jesus Christ taking meat, cutting others, beating anyone, they are they falling? Never, they are not doing. So we should not make anything by tongue, by words, by senses that anyone should be unhappy. We should not try to give him pain by anything. And how it can be done? That if you are realized so, who are you? 